Hey, how you doing? Welcome in. This is a pick a deck reading. You can pick a card, but let's just pick the whole deck, shall we? Um, you know me, like I do, um, I will use other decks and everything like that in the uh, extended read and I will look at zodiac signs. But right now, I just want you to um, look at these pairs. This is a, all these three are considered um, oracle decks, okay? And these are tarot decks. So whatever jumps out at you as like, oh, I like that green color or that purple is sure pretty or boy, I like that rose quartz. Whatever jumps out at you, um, I'm going to do a reading with these two decks and these two decks and these two decks together. So this is deck set A, <laughs> deck set B, and deck set C. So whatever, just, you know, go with your gut. Whatever jumps out at you, that's what I'm going to choose. So I'm going to move these off to the side. There's C. Whee! And uh, this is B, and I'll start with A, of course. So let's see where we go. Um, if you're new to this channel, hey there, hi there, ho there. You're as welcome as can be. And... Um, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to the content if you like the content I create, even if it's maybe not the reading that you had hoped for, but you still like the content. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and all of that. So, welcome in. Um, for those of you in the Patreon group, I do a live every Thursday night. That's going to be happening um, tonight. I post this video on the 20. 1st of May, so um, that's going to be tonight. Tomorrow is the new moon in Gemini, so lots going on here. That's really about fresh starts, so we're doing the uh, this reading in spirit of that, fresh starts, and I want to take a look today at what is going on with this relationship, you know, what lessons are in this relationship, what does this relationship have to teach me, you know, the purpose for the relationship and things like that. So let's get going. This is group A. Hope you are settled in with a little cup of tea or a cup of wine or whatever you, whatever you so choose. All right. Time for a nap. I will talk through this with you as we go here. T uh, time for a nap that's in the past. Between worlds, chaos and conflict. All right, so this is a dynamic relationship. Um, this is a three, the Between Worlds is a three card. The Chaos and Conflict is a 33 card. And the time for a nap is a 24, which is to six. So 33 is a master number in numerology. Three is Venus. All right, so this is um, a highly volatile relationship. This can be about learning what's healthy and what's not healthy in relationships. This person could be teaching you that. You know, pull yourself out of the details of the relationship a little bit just to see the bigger picture of it. And I think that that's what's going on here. Um, I will be doing some morning message, um, a morning message video tomorrow that's uh, going to be kind of a hybrid informational video and um, I'm going to talk about numerology and astrology more so you might tune in for that. My morning messages are Monday through Friday. Sometimes they're readings, sometimes they're informational, really just whatever wants to come out. This is about numerology, astrology, soulmates, and twin flames and I'm going to share with you what I know and what I've learned and it seems completely appropriate for me to say this to you guys because you have a a 33 master number here and in a numerology that is about the helpers that is about those who are the teachers the helpers I feel a lot of people accessing the twin flame template um, maybe not original twin flames but are accessing it because you're awakened because you're available to it you're open to it are really the helpers and teachers of other people as well so that feels like one of the reasons, one of the purposes of the relationship that you're envisioning here that you have in your mind. Star. I like the underside of the deck sometimes. Sometimes it just works, okay? So this is about a very, this is Aquarian and Virgo, very healing, very, uh, this relationship is, is um, a master teacher. 
The Hermit is a master teacher. It's a number nine card. The star is about hope. And we are going through a cycle here. We're ending a cycle and beginning a new cycle. The new cycle we're coming into is the age of Aquarius, which star is Aquarian. And you are going, because you're experiencing this relationship, this can be twin flame, this can be um, very important soulmate connection that is about teaching. Okay, Knight of Pentacles, Three of Cups, it's likely it taught you first. That's as soon as I, I mean, I didn't even know this was coming out, but this is what it, it can teach you through some pretty tough experiences. All right, this relationship, there could have been a third party and you feel very uh, betrayed by that. Okay, um, this could be, a, I see a lot of Virgo energy here, Virgo and um, Aquarius. Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Cups, Hope for a New Day, Nine of Swords, woo! Death. This relationship teaches through difficult experience. Okay, Five of Wands and the Queen of Cups. So I, in the extended, I will look at Virgo, obviously. Virgo, Aquarius, Scorpio. So I feel like both of y'all um, single, Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Cups. One of you is very hopeful. One of you is the star, okay? The star could be the star or a star. Um, somebody who shines very brightly. There could be some Leo here also. Um, there's so much hope for coming together as a couple, this person up here could friend zone the other one. Virgo energy here, Knight of Pentacles, Three of Cups. Just really slow. This person's very slow to do anything, to move toward relationship, to uh, be in, in commitment. Um, it could be because this person has been hurt so badly in their life that they have a lot of damage to them. Um, I feel like the nines here, right? We're coming to the end of a cycle. The world is showing you, these are the fixed signs in astrology here. And the fixed signs are, um, you know, Taurus and Leo, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and uh, Aquarius. And it is about, um, it kind of is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But honestly, I feel like this is, this has, uh, that's the end of that cycle of, hey, this was going along just fine, no big deal. But now we're coming to a, a time when this needs some fixing, right? Nine and 10, we're coming to the end of this cycle. And it's like in your head, right? It's, um, there's pentacles here together. You guys are on the same page as it relates to your stability, as it relates to how you move through the world or how you, you know, believe in work and money and things like that. There could be a shared values, um, there's big transformation, scorpionic energy here. This relationship is endlessly transformational, okay? That's another reason for this relationship. Three of Cups and Ace of Cups. This is kind of a mismatch because the Three of Cups is about friendship. Ace of Cups is about the opportunity uh, for love. And so I'm just going to say this, that friendship, as opposed to like super duper overwhelmingly Pluto, Plutonic, Pluto relationships, Pluto relationships, okay, the ruler of, of uh, Scorpio is Pluto, you know we're in Pluto retrograde right now, right? So Pluto retrograde, things come to light, and Plutonic relationships are so fraught, are so, you know, oh, it's just so, um, I've never felt so close to some of these are often, um, I was just watching uh, someone talk about this. They're often mistaken for twin flames. And the relation, the re reason for the relationship is to show you all of your unhealthy shit. Okay? And that is a crossover with twin flames. And I do feel because of the ascension that's happening and so many more people are awakening, people can access the twin flame template. It doesn't mean they're original twin flames or they're not original twin flames. It's like, I don't even want, I don't like the elitism of twin flame um, lore, okay? Because it feels to me like, well, there's just, it's so rare, okay? And it is rare, but the twin flame template exists for um, an evolutionary change. 
the original Twin Flames are here to uh, allow other people to share the template and teach them about the difference between plutonic relationships, which are codependent relationships, which are difficult, um, endlessly hurtful, uh, narcissistic partners, things like that, that because the energy is so strong, the lesson is strong with those relationships, okay? And the lesson is also strong with twin flame energy. It's a different feel though. It's a different feel. So the plutonic relationships you can, and I will talk about this in the morning message video, um, you can have, and actually on tonight's live in Patreon, because we talk a lot about twin flame issues, and I'm going to bring this up there. It is um, how to navigate that, how to discern uh, the difference between a plutonic relationship and a twin flame relationship. Plutonic relationships are um, devastatingly um, hellish. That's where you have, and you know, you can call them uh, fake twin flames, or you can call them um, karmic, you know, karmic partners, or whatever they are. But it doesn't matter what the label is. The plutonic relationships are there to show you the baser, deeper things that really need to be healed. Do twin flames show that? Yes, they do. And that's why those things, those two things are um, not in conflict, but they are um, often mistaken for each other, okay? So this, as a basis, uh, friendship has created love. One person wants love, one person may still be in the friendship phase here. So there's struggle between the two, okay? And so we're coming to the end of this cycle. One person feels anxiety. This is the nine of pentacles person feels anxiety. The 10 of swords person, um, it's almost like they go from, um, it's almost like they go from happiness to depression. They could have some kind of bipolar thing going on. They could have some kind of uneven personality. And so they, they like their work because it evens them out. Okay, it evens out their personality. Um, so I'll talk more about the, the plutonic versus the twin flame because, um, I feel like at the end of the day, the twin flames are much more about mission. Okay. And it's less about the, it's less about proving anything. Plutonic relationships can be about proving things to yourself, proving things about healing and looking at all of these things. So a lot of times you have a plutonic relationship that shows up in or around a twin flame connection, right? A plutonic relationship, and you can often mistake that and go toward the plutonic relationship as opposed to going toward the twin flame, which seems very um, even, like you can't lose that person. This person is, um, there's a deep, deep feeling of friendship there's a deep feeling of camaraderie. There's no codependence. There's not when a, when a twin flame relationship is to come together, all of that stuff is healed. That's why it's like thank you, plutonic relationship, because you're helping me go through all this stuff. The other twin flame may be beyond it, right? Just not even in it, not interested in teaching it, just doing it, showing showing their light, and that's what you're doing. I feel like these two people have come through some difficult stuff and are transforming into this beautiful higher version. Because you know, Twin Flame um, Path is all about higher version of love, self-love, the, the uh, Jesus-like compassion, things like that. They're not down there in the depths of things like ripping each other apart, okay? You can say anything to a Twin Flame, okay? There's often, you know, no games, no nothing like that with with uh, plutonic relationships you can that can be some of the early stages of it can be similar so you can really be confused about that uh tomorrow in the morning messages i will talk about numerology and astrology of those things so you can kind of differentiate okay all right so i'm going to keep going with this this feels to me like there's an ending of a cycle here this ten of swords and this nine of swords so let's see where this goes um Whoopsie, that doesn't go there. Let's see where this goes. Because I feel like the struggle is real, okay? If that's what you want to name this, the struggle is real. Group A, the struggle is real. 
Um, and also, I think there can be some kind of, you know, I was talking all about this twin flame versus plutonic relationship. I think you can see that in this situation, like, which is it? Which is it? Okay, so group A, I'm going to continue on. Um, if this hasn't resonated with you, then group B is next. If you're looking for the extended for group A, that link is below. All right. All right, group B, how are you? So let's see what this relationship is about. I'm gonna use this animal spirit deck. Get the energies of the relationship. Let's see where we go. Let's see where we go. All right, so what are the lessons? What is this relationship teaching me? I talked a lot about um, plutonic versus twin flame in group A. Canary spirit, sing your own song. This person uh, is in your life to help you gain more independence. Be here now, hummingbird spirit. Birds, beautiful. Electric eel spirit, bring your ideas to life. Wow, this person is here to help inspire you um, to get yourself out there, um, to shine your light, to show your... So this person could be doing that in a negative way or a positive way, right? It can be this person is continually breaking up with you because you need to be independent, or this person is um, uh, helping to support you so you can do the work you need to do. All right, let's see more about this relationship, please. The purpose for this relationship. All right, underneath, King of Wands. This person is entrepreneurial by nature. This could be you or them, or bringing out your entrepreneurial spirit. Bring your ideas to life. That is the entrepreneur of the deck, the King of Wands. Sagittarian energy, absolutely. Wow, Leo, fire sign. King of Pentacles, oh my goodness. Wow, two kings. Okay, and the other person, five of pentacles, four of pentacles, knight of wands. So if this person, if this person is here as a very strong, okay, a very strong, um, maybe very successful person, all right, to bring out your entrepreneurial spirit. They could also be somebody who doesn't have much. Five of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, yet they're highly creative. That's more Sagittarian energy. And if that's you, that you don't have much, but you're highly creative, this person is here to help support you so that you can bring out your, uh, bring your ideas to life. If it's the other way around, if you're the one who is in this position, this King of Wands, King of Pentacles, um, this other person on purpose has no money so that you will do the work to make all the money. Okay, there's, you know, see what I mean? Like positively or negatively, this person is in your life to help you achieve success. All right, so nine of pentacles, wish granted, lovers, Gemini energy, wow, Libra energy, balance. Balancing your wishes, your, your, um, your choices. This person is so interesting. The five of pentacles, four of pentacles, knight of wands kind of flighty, also kind of a lack mentality. All right, three of pentacles. You guys have to work together to achieve success. This person doesn't feel like they have any success. Whichever one this is, there's another king. They have it in them, absolutely. Oh, wow, wheel of fortune. So I love this temperance and strength. Sagittarius and Leo, how can it work? How can we make this work? How can you apply what you know? How can you embrace new technology? How can you do the how, 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 right? This person is very strong, obviously, strength. Um, this person has overcome many obstacles. They are the king of pentacles. Um, this person can see you as the king of wands, somebody who really needs to be out there in the world somebody who really needs to have the spark, um, uh, the fire to 
show what they know or show get through this lack mentality. Woo! Five of Pentacles and Four of Pentacles. Lots, very much lack mentality. Very much lack mentality. But look at this. This is all these the elements here. Cups, wands, pentacles, inspiration, financial security, coming from the heart chakra. It's likely that, and then I see air down here. So it says to me that this is an opportunity for you. This is an opportunity for you to really truly see your inner king. All right, if you're the one who has lack mentality, I'm not successful, I don't make a lot of money, um, I might flip from one idea to another because Sagittarius is all about focus. All right, and becoming an entrepreneur is about focus. So that's why Sagittarian with the arrows, right? It's like the arrow choo, going to your target, hitting your target. And the um, it's got to be once you hit that target, it's got to be a singular um, progression toward that goal to go retrieve that that sword or not sword to go retrieve that um, arrow. Okay, and so you can't do that if you're all over the place, if you have lack mentality, all these things. I feel like the universe is bringing the two of you together. There's lots of balance here, lots of beautiful balance. The Temperance card and then the Gemini card. So Sag and Gemini are opposite each other, right? Sag card is about philosophy. It's about big thinking. It's about um, learning something new, going to college, higher, um, higher education. The Gemini card is about pulling together systems. So you have to have the idea. The King of Swords is missing here. And what may be happening here is you might be missing the idea. You might be a little bit off um, off the mark by just a little bit. And so, you know, like if you leave Boston and you're like, well, I want to go to L.A., but the, the uh, compass in the plane is set just maybe a degree or two off, you can wind up in Mexico, right? And that's not where you want to go. So it is about, as you fly a plane, you continually tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak throughout the entire flight. This is not a set it and forget it, although there are plenty of planes you can do that, right? Plenty of planes that you can set the exact coordinates, and that's kind of what you want, all right? That's kind of what you want. This kind of situation, because of the fire here, can be a tweak and a tweak and a tweak and a tweak. So if you are... You might be like, well, I want to become an author. What kind of book? There's lots of kind of books to write. I mean, as many as you can imagine, as many as um, your mind can grasp. There are, you know, how-to books. There's literature. There's, um, there's puzzle books. There's, you know, there's just like a million different kinds of books. So what kind of book? What's the topic? And within that topic, there's just a million different ways you could tell the story. So this is about getting focused. Gemini is about systems, is about, okay, what are the, what are the ways that we're going to balance things by having systems? So you making choices here, I feel like this is a love relationship of somebody who is very accomplished already and someone who has probably more capability than the accomplished one. The accomplished one sees it like the King of Pentacles has made it. Okay? The King of Pentacles has made it. And through, you know, through some hard thought, hard won knowledge here. But the King of Pentacles, I feel, sees this person, the Five of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, as the King of Wands. Right? And the King of Wands is the inspirational leader, the uh, entrepreneur, somebody who takes chances. King of Pentacles does not take many chances, though they do have some Sag and Leo. So they like to be um, out there in the front of things. So they could be choosing you, King of Wands here, who is now operating as a Knight of Wands, needing to focus. That's this King of Pentacles thinks they can do that for you or help you get focused, help you move forward. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is turning. 
Um, opening up your heart chakra, what is the idea? I think that's the missing piece here. The King of Swords is the missing piece. What's the idea? What is the idea? And this could have something to, there could also be some legal issues here. There could be some um, creative issues uh, that get in the way. There could be, um, this is a really a joint effort. Someone with stability and knowledge and capability and experience with someone who is pro probably younger, but maybe more creative. Okay, and part of this relationship, one of the lessons is to bring your ideas to life. And that's one of the reasons this person is in your life. Okay, so we're going to continue on with this. The link is below. This is group B in the pick a deck. <laughs> and you can find that uh, extended in the Vimeo link below. I'm going to keep going. If you are continuing on, group C is next. So I'll either see you on Vimeo or I'll see it in group C. Well, hey, Group C, saving the best for last, apparently. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so this is the uh, Sacred Traveler deck. Denise Lynn, Sacred Traveler. What is this relationship here to teach me? What are the lessons of this relationship? Let's see where we go. Let's see where we go. I will look up, I will look at any of the extend, uh, in the extent that I will look at any uh, zodiac signs that show up. All right, so let's see. All right, here we go. What are the lessons this relationship is here to teach me? Begin now. Take your first step. Finding sanctuary, opening to your spiritual source. This person's on your spiritual path. Transformation, a fresh new way of living emergence, emerges. That's the death card. The sneeze. That just feels like uh, this path, you may be new to the path. All right, just starting down the path. This person is going to feel like sanctuary. Going to test you in a lot of ways, dark night of the soul. This is likely twin flame connection. Um, in the first reading, Group A, I talked about uh, Plutonian, Plutonian relationships versus twin flame relationships. I'm going to talk about that in the, in the morning messages tomorrow, too. So let's see what's going on here. We are, Pluto is the ruler of the death card, and it's the ruler, the lord of the eighth house. Transformation. This person is going to have a profound effect on you. Profound. Even though you may um, not, not be together, they'll still have a profound impact. Queen of Swords underneath. Nine of Pentacles. I'll talk through all this in a second. Uh, Nine of Pentacles, Six of Swords, Two of Wands, Page of Pentacles, Three of Swords, like I said, Part of this relationship, this is spiritual, but you may not be together. It may be one of those experiences like uh, you have long periods of separation. Okay, because you're needing to be in your own journey. Okay, your personal journey. Hermit. Oh, yeah. Hermit, five of pentacles. Six of cups, right? They come back. These are the two um, cards of past life soulmates. Okay, I would go back to look at the group A reading too. All right, um, profound um, sacrifice. There can be a, a loss of uh, financial stability here. I feel like um, one of you is taking care of the other in some meaningful way, probably financially, nine of pentacles. Okay. And that's a choice. This person has made that choice. Um, the other person here is learning something new, a little bit similar to group B. In fact, uh, learning something new about themselves. Okay. Based on loss, based on hurt, 
and um, becoming this person. You guys could be becoming um, spiritual leaders. Okay, Help, leading other people. One of you might be a monk in terms of your spiritual practice that you're not really out there. The other person's out there. What's being healed here is uh, financial instability, spiritual instability, relationship instability, all kinds of instability are what's being healed here. Three of Swords, right, walking the path. Got the, both of these. You guys could meet each other while on the spiritual path. Um, three of Swords. For some of you, this person could have inflicted that pain. But I, I feel like it just, you know, on the path, it just brings it up again, right? Transforming. Um, finding this person after having painful experiences. So you, you're beginning now. This is really about going down the spiritual path. So th this is likely... If you know this person because of your spiritual path or when you started your spiritual path, you met this person at the start of your spiritual path. Okay, so you might have had a, um, a divorce or a bankruptcy or a losing of a career or something like that. A lot of people are waking up right now because they're having massive life transformations. Mine started in 2008. Um, the banks, you know, went off a cliff in 2008. Um, I lost my job and I got divorced and I sold my house back to my ex-husband all within three months. And then within six months, I met my, um, my twin. And then in the same time period, there was a plutonic relationship that was painful and, and, um, very, uh, uh, charged it was so uh, full of clinginess and unhealthiness and narcissistic patterns and karmic patterns and all of it. I assumed that was the twin. The other one who was just about supportive, um, even though there were some things that need to be healed within him and things that need to be healed within me, which is what is happening here. There is likely... Uh, one of you is also meeting another person that you may think is your twin, but that is a karmic partner. Okay, so that's what's happening here. And you may get, you may leave the, uh, the twin or the twin, may, the, the actual twin, you may leave that behind because you still have some lessons to learn about um, your own, your own personal lessons in this life things you're here to heal. Okay. Right. Things you're here to heal. Yes. Ace of swords, getting clear on things. Two of pentacles. There's two. Okay. Two king of cups. I see Virgo. Let's see Virgo. What's under here again? The three of swords judgment. I see Virgo here and I see, um, it could be water signs, could be an air sign, but Virgo is very strong. So Virgo is about doing the work. And this person is here to help you um, navigate doing the work. You may inadvertently or um, not on, well, you think your karmic is your twin and you think your twin is a karmic soulmate or some kind of other soulmate. But it's not the twin because the twin relationship is supposed to be so powerful and all of this. The, the, uh, karmic, the karmic partner, the one who is the Plutonian partner, is actually masquerading as the twin because you need to learn these lessons. If you thought it was, if you thought that person was not a twin and was a karmic, you'd be like, ah, I want to go toward my twin. But that's not what's here to happen right now. And you still, as you listen to this, you may be like, okay, well, no, this person really is my twin. I know it's really powerful and it, it really has some, you know, transformational properties to it and all of that stuff. You're not really meant to see the clarity of who's who until much later. So don't worry about putting a label on any of this right now. 
the, the, the thing to do is healing the heartache, healing the low vibration um, as it relates to abundance and stability, as it relates to um, what you deserve in love, all of those things need to be healed. So you may actually be alone. You may actually, both of you may actually choose to walk this path alone. Those are singles um, and may not come back to each other for, for some time, a period of time. Could be five years, two to five years here. But don't worry about that because you're going to be drawn toward the person who's going to teach you the most right now. This person keeps coming back and coming back and you're like, it's got to be my twin. This person keeps coming back around. They keep showing up. This is past life stuff. Yes, it is. It most definitely is. And there's a reason why the person that you're thinking of as I'm talking about this, you could be like, no, that's definitely my twin. And here's the thing. You're going to think that. That's exactly what you're meant to think. Okay, because this is the person who needs to be in your life right now, as painful as it might be on a couple of different levels. This is the person who's meant to be. So you can see clearly and transform. You may have a dark night of the soul coming. Okay, and you may be going into sanctuary, going into being on your own. You both may be choosing that, and then you come back together. Okay, so let's see where we go with this. This is group C. Um, it is about finding your truth. It's not really about who's my twin, who's not my twin. It's not about that. It's about you finding your truth. Both of these soulmates are here to help you do that. It doesn't matter. Okay, I know you think it does, but it, at this point it does not matter. These, both of these soulmates are here for a very, very important lesson. Okay, so let's keep going. Group C, let's keep going. Pick a deck. Link is below for you. I'll see you over there.